this is your first time to the channel consider subscribing press the bell icon and never miss an update so hey guys today there is an update on the rd350 the update is uh, it's starting uh, actually it started to run right so i'll uh, tell you guys exactly uh, the thing which is wrong with it and there is a suspicion about something else as well which i'll give you guys an update on okay so uh, first things first for any engine to run you need air fuel and spark so air is all around us like you know this is <clears throat> mean sea level <coughs> excuse me so there is no shortage of air but uh, it could be fuel or spark so first thing that we did is we checked the fuel um there is ample amount of fuel actually how you basically check for fuel is you place your palm behind the carburetor opening and then you start kicking the bike so you will have your uh, hand would be fully wet okay so that's how you check for fuel so um, you should not twist the accelerator while doing it uh, technically speaking uh, even the pilot uh, jet should have enough fuel to you know make your palm wet so that is also checked so the third thing is spark uh, so that is also checked because you know there is spark how you can check it uh, remove the plug connect it to the plug cap uh, ground the plug somewhere on the engine and then kick it um so if there is spark it will produce spark so that was there another challenge which could have happened is um the spark strength but we know for sure that the spark strength is there because this is actually producing spark which is almost 2 cm long um so that is not a challenge so what could have been wrong so the next thing next obvious thing is obviously you know if the carburetor is not right um, which is of high probability because made in china so if the carburetor is not right then obviously it will uh, you know produce the same kind of issues so what i did is uh, i actually uh, first thing that i did is i dropped the needle because i knew it is running too rich because the plug was wet and i'm saying plug not plugs because it was wet in only one cylinder okay so we started with the left cylinder so what i did is i swapped the carburetor next because changing the needle position didn't make any change so once i swapped the carburetor uh, the issue moved from the left carburetor to the right carburetor okay so now uh, what has happened is uh, the carburetors are uh, the culprit because we know since the issue also moved along with the carburetor so what i did is uh, last sunday i took apart the carburetor completely i cleaned each passage properly with compressed air uh, i also noticed that there was a slight issue with the gasket that is there in the carburetor there is a rubber o ring uh inside the carburetor near the slide and that o-ring was slightly pinched so what i did is i removed the o-ring removed the old gasket maker that was used on the o-ring and you know installed a fresh gasket maker on that uh not huge amounts but reasonably liberal amounts uh and then i put the carburetor back so it was still misfiring but i took the bike out and even though it was misfiring the bike was running at around uh the meter was showing around 80 to 90 km per hour you cannot achieve that on a single cylinder on an rd350 so i knew that intermittently the uh bike was actually firing on both the cylinders 
So at certain RPMs, there was this too much of oil getting into the cylinder. So another thing that you guys must have noticed is that pool of oil and that pool of oil. Okay. So that is primarily 2T oil uh, and petrol because it was kind of, you know, not burning and it was coming out and dripping all over the place. So also another thing which was rather strange is because see, I believe in buying the cheapest 2T oil while, you know, I run in the bike because if you buy expensive 2T oil, um, that is not going to let the bike run in properly. So I usually go and buy 2T oil that you get um, at the petrol pump. Uh, and I have been using it on all of my bikes and none of this, these bikes melt funny like my RD350. Okay, so there is a hint of what could have happened. So the RD350 smells very funny to start with. And secondly, um, you know, I, I, I can smell it burning the gear oil. Okay. So I thought, okay, maybe, you know, gear oils are cheaper. Like you get some XYZ brand gear oil for like, you know, less than 100 bucks a liter and then if the petrol pumps do that, then, you know, it is cheaper for them. So there is a good chance that they might have done that or maybe, you know, they have given me uh, an oil which is adulterated. So there is a very good chance. Uh, but there was another very good chance that uh, it's actually slightly burning the oil because... Uh, I might have, I might have technically overfilled uh, the oil a bit. So basically, <clears throat> RD350 takes about 900 mm of oil. It basically says 900 centimeter cube, which translates to 900 ml of oil. So that 900 ml of oil is something that we don't get in a... Uh, oil can so oil cans are usually one liter so there is this hundred milliliter extra okay and if you notice my bike is not marking any territory anywhere else except for the um, the this oil these drips that you can see is because the bike was you know moved forward and back there is absolutely no drip coming from the engine but what can happen is uh, there is a good possibility that the crank side oil, uh, you know, uh, seal is not doing its job properly. There is also a huge possibility that because of my overfilling of 100 milliliters of oil, the extra oil is kind of entering through the crank oil seal. So this time when I build the engine, I also install the uh, crank side o-ring as well so i know for sure that it can't be both going bad so the possibility that i see now is uh, it's actually uh, overfilled by a couple of mm, you know maybe 50 to 60 milliliters by now it has burned some of it I'm hoping that there is nothing on the crank. I will check that once, you know, I'll remove the silences. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, procure a boroscope, which I can, you know, send through the exhaust port and see if the crank has too much of oil because it's a re recently built engine. So there should be absolutely zero oil there. So um, if that is the case, then you know, anyways, I have to paint the head. So I might take the top end apart and then, you know, do the painting of the head as well as drain the excess oil from the crankcase uh, inside the combustion chamber uh, and learn my lesson that you should only fill the amount of oil 
that is recommended anything over and above that is going to put you in trouble like this i sincerely hope that it is as simple as that if it is not then we are going to chase our tail further so what i did uh, is i actually removed the uh, air filters from the carburetor because since it was running rich uh, and then i took it for a ride the bike actually has a tall front end so if there is going to be you know those power wheelies it's not easy to lift that front end because it is like a cruiser okay you'll have to do a uh, clutch wheelie and that's not easy and that is something that i'm not very comfortable with okay so what is happening now is the rear end is kicking out so every time i give a throttle the rear end is sliding out so which means that the bike is running much better than how it was earlier so my next goal is to definitely take it for a ride and shoot a video so that is going to happen during this weekend also couple of other things that i have to um, address this weekend one is uh, i have to take the bike again to the denting guy get this mud guard gap fix because this actually looks hideous so probably we'll maybe cut from here and then you know bring them closer we'll have to do some jugad uh, so this guy who i have near my house is actually literally a magi uh, magician so you know this guy i trust in him so i'll give this to him and i'll ask him to fix that so that is one thing after that is fixed we'll come back bring the bike home and take these guys apart so the fork actually travels still here okay this much is the travel so if the fork is let's say this long uh it should still be okay so my idea is not to cut like 5 6 inches if you see there is an inch on top so what i am planning to cut is i am planning to cut this much so this much should be around 1 and 1/2 inch uh so if that is done before i cut obviously i'll take a measurement with the stock rd and i'll see how long the shocks are so that is going to happen but in the meantime uh this is going to cut get cut and i'll have an extension like this on the top so if it is sitting too short i'll probably push the shocks down if it is sitting too tall then probably you know it will go up a bit so that is plan number 2 uh then the other plan anyways we are not plating the tail light piece but we have to shape it properly so this is a stencil or a template that i made uh, from the other tail light bracket that i have and using that template uh, i have actually marked from where i should cut so this is going to happen this weekend plus as you can see it is not sitting flush either it wants to sit like this so that also needs to be fixed we need to check where it is hitting most likely it is hitting here so we'll have to make the circle little bigger so that's what happens when you buy aftermarket shit uh <clears throat> excuse my language i really didn't mean to call it shit but it is shit so uh next thing is we have to paint this other than that we have to actually fill these holes so i have something that i have bought which is very very you know famous in the rd community so let me show you and please ignore all other spare uh you know things that you see here because nothing is for sale uh i think i might have kept it in my usual stash yes i did so this is my new stash for the parts and with one hand <coughs> it's difficult to open this okay so i'm 
Guess what these are? These are called mango washers. So what they do is them back. They actually sit like uh, this. Okay. Sorry, like this. So there is a small notch here, uh, which is supposed to go inside this hole. This hole is not this big. It is. A bit smaller so these are the uh, very sacred mango washers uh, these are obviously not original uh, these are aftermarket but the quality is simply amazing and the price at which i got them you know literally wants me to go and kiss that guy who sold me this you know? So these two are for the front and these two are for the back. Yeah, the quality is good. Like this is where the indicators will come and sit and this will go into the slot. So it's an awesome purchase. Uh, another thing that I'm looking for is I'm going to change all this jagged setup that I have here. So I'm going to procure some thick washers and then give them for plating. So yeah, there are going to be things coming in the future. So maybe thicker than these and we will get those done. So that is my plan on this bike. As of now, I'll make you listen to the growl of this bike. This one actually growls like an HD. Um, If you could smell yeah that smells like four stroke oil so looks like it is slightly burning the gear oil I'll check uh, it could also be because I'm missing a piece here and that piece actually prevents from oil getting inside this cover uh, so I don't know I might have to do some jugard for that and also I have to check how much oil is there. Uh, probably I'll drain some of it. Uh, maybe, you know, the whole of it and then measure it and then back fill it again. Uh, but I hope you get what the issue is now. So yeah, next is going to be a ride video. I'll take it for a ride. Before that, obviously, I'll drain the oil and I'll refill the oil. Uh, so the ride video is not going to be a hooliganistic video. Uh, that During that video, I'll give you guys an honest opinion of the uh, new CDI that we have here. So far, so good. Like the lights work, everything works. Uh, the only downside that I have with the setup right now is, if you notice, nothing works when the bike is off, obviously. But... glows so the funny thing is uh, we need to fix that otherwise my OCD is going to kill me really and I'm, I'm happy that most of the gremlins are out now all we need to do is just some basic stuff so yeah we'll get it plated 
the plan for the rims is I'm going to retain this rear rim, front rim. What we are going to do is we are going to get a unicorn rear wheel rim and we are going to install this front rim. I mean the tire and everything on that. A uh, couple of things like, you know, these kind of bolts, this one, other bolts, uh, wherever you see are going to be zinc dipped. So I'm going to take a small set of bolts and I'm going to get them zinc dipped. Um, other than that, I don't think there is any more work. Yeah, I forgot to show you guys. Look, these stickers actually look amazing. I think because of these stickers, the bike gods are little pleased with me. So these are like very thick. Superb to touch. Uh, so yeah, that's a video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, share and subscribe. If you didn't, put something in the comment. Tell me why exactly you didn't like it so that we can work on that. And yeah, the camera is not on yet. This is still my phone doing the trick. So till the time the camera gets on we'll have to live with that okay anyways thanks a lot for watching see you in the next video bye, -bye.